like this is problem 7.6 and we are drawing the shear and moment diagrams of this beam. In this case, we have cantilever beam that has a fixed support at A. So this is a fixed support. And this is important because we know that a fixed support restricts three type of motion of three degrees of freedom, which is displacement in y direction, displacement in x direction, and rotation. So I have three reactions. Then we have a distributed load of two kilonewtons per meter, and then we have a concentrated moment at the other end of the beam. Let's call this point B. The first step always in drawing the, the internal forces diagram is to find the external reaction. So it will be the forces produced in this support. So step number one, find external reactions. So in this case, I will draw the free body diagram of the beam. And then I have my concentrated moment, right? Right here of 15 kilo newtons meters. I have, oh, I, I didn't write the, the dimension of the beam. This is three meters, right? Therefore, I have a concentrated load of two kilo newtons meters per three meters. We give me a concentrated load of six kilo Newtons located at 1.5 from this end and 1.5 of this end, right? And then I have my external forces produced by this support, and I will have AX, AY, and A moment, moment at A. So I need to apply my equations of equilibrium to this beam in order to find these three reactions. So I add forces in x and I find that ax is equal to zero. I add forces in y and I have that six kilonewtons plus ay is equal to zero, therefore ay is equal to six kilonewtons. And then I take moment in any point, I can take moment respect to point b and I have that negative 15. Remember that I'm using x, y as a, my inertia coordinate system. Therefore, any moment contraclockwise will be positive. So negative 15 kilonewtons, and then I have a negative moment produced by this force, right? Produced, I always place my hand at the point where I'm taking moment and curl my fingers towards the force and it get negative 1.5 times 6 kilonewtons, and then I place again my hand where I'm taking moment, I curl my fingers, and I get a positive moment, 3 times a y. This moment m a equals to 0. I have already the value for a y, which is 6, so this is 18. This is 9 and 15, so I get that my moment is equals to six kilo newton meters. Okay, now that I have these three external forces, I can concentrate to find out the internal force. And as I say, I will make a cut as in, in as many sections as events I have in my beam. But, so I, here I start with a concentrated moment, and here I, I have a distributed load, but the distributed load is along the whole beam. So with only one cut, that it can be in any place along the beam, I will be able to cover the whole beam, expressions for the shear and the moment. So I will analyze the internal forces now. So this is step two internal forces, 
and I will do my cut of either side. So remember that I can draw my free body diagram of the left side or, or the right side of my beam. And if I draw the left side, I will have only the concentrated moment and my distributed load over the piece of beam that I'm cutting. So I will do my free body diagram of, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to do left side. As I said, you can do either side of the cut. So I will do my free body diagram of this little piece. And this little piece is at X. I have a concentrated moment right here of 15 kilonewton meters. And then I have a concentrated load right here that is comes from the distributed load. This distributed load, I'm looking at only this little piece of distributed load. So the, the magnitude is two kilonewtons meters and the distance is x. Therefore, I will have two x kilonewtons. Now I have my internal forces. I will only draw my shear force and my moment because I already know that anything in the actual direction is equal to zero because I don't have any actual force applied to my beam. So that's the uh, my, my free body diagram of my cut. So I'm going to apply equations of equilibrium to that little diagram. And I have adding forces in Y give me that I have negative 2x negative v equals to zero. Therefore, v is equals to 2 negative 2x kilonewtons. And then I add moment. I can take moment at the point where I cut, which is O. So moment at point O give me. I have negative 15 kilonewton meters. Now I have to take the moment of this force. This force is located at x half. And why at x half? Because this, this distributed load is constant. Therefore, it will be at the middle of my free body diagram. So I have a positive movement of 2x times x over half. And then I have my internal bending moment. That's equals to zero. Now I can solve for m and I will have 15, right, minus x squared. And that is in kilonewton meters. So I was able to find an expression for my shear force, and I was able to find an expression for the moment. Now that I have those two expressions, I can draw my, actually, let me draw the beam again with the forces first. So the force, the diagram that I will draw is this diagram with my 15 kilonewton meters, my distributed load, and I have these forces over here that I already know, so I can write them in, in yellow as well. So it will be six kilonewtons, and I have a moment that is positive, which is then six kilonewton meters. And I will draw my shear and moment diagram like that. So as you see here, when x is equals to zero, my force is equals to zero. When x is equals to three, my v is equals to negative six. So I start at zero, I end, end up at negative six, and how do I go from zero to six? I go with a, with a line of negative slope two. So it's a line, let me draw a straight line. So my point ends up here, negative six kilo newtons. So this is negative all along, and this is, the equation is 
negative 2x kilonewtons. So, and from previous uh, examples, I have told you that any time that we have this type of discontinuity, we have to check if we have a concentrated load of the same magnitude of my jump in the discontinuity. Here we have six as a concentrated load, and here we have six. So we can draw this line, and it gives me at the end zero. So my shear diagram starts at zero and ends up at zero. That's very important to check if my diagram is correct. For the moment, I do the same. For x equals to zero, I have the moment start at 15, and for x equals three, my moment it starts, a, a, that will be three squared, it will be 15 minus nine, which is six, so I have six. So, my diagram is starts at 15, right, and ends up at six. And how does it go from, I can draw it a little bit, let me draw my line a little bit lower, so that it's more clear. So I start at 15, end up at 6 kilonewton meters, and I start at 15 kilonewton meters. How do I go from 15 to 6? I go with a quadratic function with a negative value, a sign before the x squared. So it means a quadratic function concave down. So this is a, something like that. So this function gives me a positive moment, and this function over here is equal to 15 minus x squared kilonewton meters. Very important also that as well as the shear moment closes, it means that start in zero and end up in zero, the same should happen with the moment. So here we have a discontinuity. And this continuity has a magnitude of a jump or a, of 15 kilonewton meters. And as you see, we have a moment right here that is also has a magnitude of 15 kilonewton meters. So I have a jump over here that goes upwards. And then I have also here a discontinuity. And the magnitude of this discontinuity is six. And I have also in this case, I have a moment that produces a negative jump. So my diagram starts at zero and ends up at zero. And this is positive. It means that I am pushing this beam down with this distributed flow, but I'm pushing it up with this uh, moment. So at the end, my beam is the form, so to say, come up, up because my moment gives me a positive value. So the beam, so to say, will deform in this direction, positive, concave, concave upwards.